Hi, Alan. Hi. <laughs> I'm Danielle Cezanne. I'm the gallery director at Weber Center for the Arts, and I'm going to interview Alan Christian from House of Balls. Hi, my name is Alan uh, Christian, Mr. Lucky, aka Mr. Lucky. Um, this is my studio, uh, the House of Balls, which has been been in Minneapolis since 1986. Uh, the first incarnation was. <clears throat> Some people may remember the old Berman Buckskin building. Uh, I was there for eight years. It, for me, it was a one-room space that opened up to the city, and it was uh, really about my own process of becoming an artist. I, I, even after I left that place, I still didn't feel like an artist, but it got me on the road to my own identity and my own voice. Um, it was one room. Mm -hmm. It was the the view I had was of the gateway of Minneapolis. Over the eight years I was there, the view of the city changed dramatically. So for me, it was about the the internal process for me to change. Just you know, on the inside from what I was seeing from the outside. But it, it what it allowed me to do is to begin having a dialogue with the public about. Uh, I don't think I thought about it then, but what creativity is and how we, how we need that force to make a better world. Uh, the second space I had, which I was in for probably, I think it was 22 years, was in the Colonial Warehouse building. Again, when I left the, the berm, and it was all about trying to find a public space, a window to be looked into and for me to look out of. It was, again, bigger. It allowed for uh, expansion of ideas for me, um, not only physically, but just um, I was beginning to mature and I, I began to, you know, was always continuing to explore, but I began getting different tools. I had a welder then, I had a plasma cutter, and I got a plasma cutter in 2001, and that was a big uh, shift for me and just in terms of kind of beginning to work more in metal, less in bowling balls, um, and, and working more in uh, other found objects. So this is the third incarnation, seven years already in this space. And it is so, I just love this space. It is uh, everything that I, everything I've ever wanted. It's big enough for what I do. It's connected to the community. It's on the West Bank, which I never, being raised in Minneapolis, uh, I was a North Sider, so I never really knew about this area of the city. And uh, having been here for seven years, I've come to realize a lot of the history of it and the fact that it has always been ground zero for immigration and it's beautiful to be in this space right now when we have all the Somali community, the Eritreans, the uh, East African community. Um, glad to be here. Well, what inspired you to become an artist in the first place? Well, as a kid, as a young kid, um, I drew a lot and I knew there was something, mm -hmm. I, knew I, I, I knew I could at least replicate what I saw. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in fifth grade, I had a teacher that um, saw something in me and she actually got me lessons at the Minneapolis Institute of Art, so they would. But as a teenager, I, I really, I, uh, I always think of shop class and beginning the skill set that I use when I'm making sculpture, which is the hands-on, the, the wood classes, the, the metal classes, it was all about learning how to put things together, how to take things apart, so. So how did traveling tie into you becoming an artist? Well, again, the traveling was initiated by, by joining the military. And so the, the traveling within that structure allowed me to see other cultures. And at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't an artist, but it was, it, I think it was the, keystone for me to becoming an artist because 
um, I began to realize what other cultures were using art to do to tell their own story. So when I got out of the military, I, I, had, uh, I saw something in the newspaper about MCAD. I, I applied even though I, again, was not feeling anywhere close to what an artist should feel and the resume I had was so weak, I got in. I was there for a year and a half. There were a couple sculptors that worked, rented studio space, but weren't students. And they're the ones that really influenced me in terms of, look, you've been, you were in the military, you were a builder. The, the kind of things that I felt were the most connected to me were sculpture. And these two people really were big influences for me towards that medium. Uh, when I left AMCAD, I got a studio in the Berman Buckskin building. There were multiple, there were probably 15 artists in that building. So for me, it was about all of a sudden, I felt like I was part of an artistic community. And that was really important to me. And that opened me up to going beyond the artistic side of things into the human side of, the, here's the social community. Here are the people that don't consider them, themselves artists, but how do we connect with them to try and explain and have them experience, you know, their own idea of what creativity can be for them. Mm -hmm. Well, how important is the social aspect of um, um, art, doing art in community? Um, you know, for me, it's worked in multiple kind of different mediums, the art car community, the the Burning Man community, the working with students on the, on the West Bank, having taught different classes over the years, um, going in re on residencies. So did you work another job um, during the time that you had those um, studios in different locations? At the same time I went to art school, I became an electrician. Um, so I was an electrician until three years ago. These, these kind of uh, vocations ran parallel. And although, although electric, electrical work is very uh, rule driven, part of the creativity is making it, is the pr in the professional side of it, making it look good, making it, not only you need to make it work, mm -hmm. but how you make it visually fit within the environment. So, um, you know, that job also got me a lot of materials. I would go to different places to see how, you know, different manufacturing, um, how they worked with different materials. There's a lot of machine control wiring, so it was interesting to get in these factories and see how processes worked and how I could take that process and relate it to my art, but also their Refuse was also a gold mine for me. Yeah. Because it was, they were always looking to get rid of it, and I was always looking for material. You've already um, stated about how your creativity is fueled by being around other artists, but what are some of the artists that continue to inspire you? You know, one of these one of these people initially that I talked about from MCAD <clears throat> still influences me. It was just. Uh, his name is uh, James Larson. He's a stone carver. Uh -huh. So he'd studied in Italy. And uh, just the, the, you know, he does figurative work. So we run these kind of parallel, that's what I do. Uh -huh. the, the kind of vision is the same in terms of what, what we work, uh, you know, the, the medium, or not the medium we work with, but the, the kind of, Human, the human form. Uh -huh. um, you know, I think I'm, I'm, so he's been a big influence for me. Uh, puppeteers. Like um, Heart of the Beast or Bare Bones? Um, Dan Polnow, who passed away this year, is a, is a big influence. My friend Munir Carr, who is a Javanese theater musician. Brian Selznick, there was a group from New York that I did. Um, that was that was in town 
kind of rehearsing for a production that they did at Rockefeller Center. So I became friends with all these people and I began making puppets out of uh, silverware. So they created a group called, called Fjork, F-J-O-R-K. Uh -huh. And our, you know, our relationship lasted for years. Our friendship has lasted longer than the theatrical side of it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I could go on and on about, you know, even just Louis Perron. Yeah. There's, you know, the, the people from the art car world, Joe Hayden. I was just gonna ask you about art cars and um, that you travel all over. I think people don't know that it's, it's bigger um, it's bigger than just Minneapolis, it's all oh, over it's, the world. It's, it is, it really is. Um, probably more exclusively to the United States because you're, um, you're kind of given a little more freedom to do what you want to these, to these things. As long as, you, as long as it sticks on the car, you know, you're probably okay. I, I think a lot of other countries, well, not a, no, I shouldn't say that because when you look at other cultures, Pakistan, um, Afghanistan, there's a lot of cultures that have painted vehicles that are amazing works of art. Um, the more sculptural forms though tend to be connected to the United States. And you know, there's, uh, there's an amazing group of people from Houston, from Seattle, from all over the country. Well, what about um, discovering yourself as an artist during COVID? Did that have a, an effect on you? You know, it's been a really interesting year because so much time has been spent alone, you know, except for my lovely wife, Mary Jane. But I would come down to the studio, she would work at home writing, and I would, I would be here, and really nobody came into the studio. So it was, um, it just focused me more on, I think some of the work that came out of the last year is some of my strongest. So being retired and having the time to really focus on what I was doing, on, on what I am doing, uh, but it also gave me a, a lot of time to work on the environment, which is, you know, a separate, it's not separate, but, it, it, but it's what ties all the work together, the environment. And that's what I worked on a lot this year. This space has been, I, I'm, I'm, a lot of homeless people, a lot of people in need have come back here and found refuge in this space. And I think it's become one that allows people to catch their breath and to just sit and think about their own um, their own future, their own presence mm -hmm. within this point in time. You do a lot of work uh, with community. Um, you worked with youth in this neighborhood, Somali youth, and then you also um, took art cars on the road to senior citizens' homes. Um, how how uh, important is that for you to give back? It's become more and more important. It's, it's, it's I think, my own evolution as an artist, um, which initially was very s focused on what I was creating. So it was very self-centered. Um, I mean, I, I realized there was, I was part of this larger community, but the, but the majority of the focus was on doing the work, trying to figure out how, who I was, that kind of idea that you have to love yourself in order to be loved. And that's what I had to do artistically. I had to find out who I was as an artist for me, in order for me to um, know how I could give it back. And the, the blessing was that I always, have always had this public space, so, um, so one was already feeding into the other, just, just mm -hmm. by having a window for people to look in and me to have something to present. And, uh, I love the sculpture that you did that, um, you know, like Palmer's has the, the character, that bike rack, and, right. and other characters that you did that went with the places. It's really great. Yeah, uh, so part of it is this artistic side, part of it is just 
you know, I spent, you know, the last three days, spent six hours out in the community picking up garbage. Mm -hmm. So, and trying to talk to the businesses, how do we get, let's, you know, we, we put all this plywood up for the Chauvin trial. Let's go and, you know, my, my take is let's go take the, let's get this plywood down because it's still this sign of fear. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't feel like the community should be living in that, you know, with that visible element that you're seeing every day. I'll be, you know, next week I'll be helping the Cedar uh, Cultural Center. We're gonna paint the outside of the building where people have been graffitiing it. So let's, they're about to reopen their amazing benefit uh, and gift to the community too, with the music they bring in. Um, so it's, it's kind of about trying to get the neighborhood back, freshen it up, re-engage in, in life again. Well, did, would you like to um, give us a tour around sure. it, around the building and inside and outside? Let's start at the front door. Thank you to our premier sponsors, Emergency Contractor Services Incorporated, New Studio Architecture, Griner Construction, J.L. Schweders Building Supply Construction Incorporated, Schweders Pottery, Excel Energy Foundation, Boyum and Berenscher, Mueller Memorial, and the Pillars of White Bear Lake. This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a Minnesota State Arts Board Operating Support Grant, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. This activity is also made possible in part by the Manitou Fund.